Quen 3 Coder took the spotlight that Kimi K2 enjoyed for merely 13 days. Quen 3 Coder is not only half the size of Kimi K2, it scored even higher in coding benchmarks. And you might be wondering, how is it even possible that a model that's significantly smaller in size outperforms other state-of-the-art models that we use today? After Scaling Law was released by OpenAI in January 2020, the industry focused on expanding the existing model to get better performance. That's because Scaling Law proposed that you can predictively improve the model's performance performance based on three key variables, size, data, and compute. And a lot of people confuse scaling law with Moore's law, saying that large language models will just get better over time. So they look at groundbreaking models like Quentin 3 Coder to confirm their bias. Although Moore's law is rather an observation of how fast technology advances, scaling law proposed a power law between these variables, which gave the industry the go ahead in funding to take the existing architecture and scale them up to get better performance until it didn't. The industry is now well past the bigger is better mentality and now focuses on better architecture and better technique. And in the case of Quen3 Coder, we can look at these variables to understand at a deeper level, starting with MOE or mixture of experts. Quen3 is a 480 billion in size with 35 active parameters, which is known as mixture of experts, where it only activates a small portion or portions of the model to make inference. In comparison, Kimi K2 has 1 trillion parameters in total size with 32 active parameters and has 385 for experts, while Quen3 Coder has 160 experts. Architectures like MoWi makes inference way faster and more affordable compared to dense models that typically use the entire model. Now let's take a look at pre-training for Quen3 Coder. Quen3 Coder was trained with 7.5 trillion tokens of data, while Kimi K2 was trained with 15.5 trillion tokens, almost double in size. However, it's worth noting that Kimi K2 is not specifically a coding model like Quen3 Coder is, but the difference in data size is staggering given that Quen3 Coder outperformed Kimi K2 in coding benchmarks. It's also worth noting that 70% of the data that Quen3 Coder used for training was coding data. And to do this, Alibaba employed synthetic data, which was generated by their previous flagship model to clean out noise in the data set to improve the quality of the data, which in turn improved the quality of the model. Quen3 also incorporates Yarn, which is an architectural decision to allow input tokens to scale, and in this case, up to 1 million tokens. And Alibaba recognized that coding tasks sometimes require large-scale analysis of the entire code base, especially for agentic use cases like client and cloud code that thrives when more context window is given. In comparison, Moonshot's pre-training technique for Kimi K2 showed their impressive Muon Clip Optimizer where building on top of their existing Muon Optimizer by applying clipping to the key matrices and the query matrices to prevent a tension score explosion, which resulted in their models to be trained faster without lost spikes. And all that to say, although both Kimi K2 and Quan3 code were share MOE as their base architecture, their pre-training decisions look very different. Moving on to post-training, Alibaba focused on two main strategies in post-training processes, where they use code reinforcement learning and long horizon reinforcement learning. Since Quen3 Coder is a coding model, it has the advantage of mainly focusing on the domain of coding. And the advantage of this domain is that solutions are typically easily verifiable as pass or fail, but difficult to produce. So Quen3 Coder had the advantage over Kimi K2 for post-training because they could focus more on the coding aspect than general purpose. Alibaba also doubled down on the importance of long horizon reinforcement learning, where you give the model a lot of leash in figuring out how to plan and use tools like checking the debugging log or error logs or any other intermediary steps to get to the actual final solution, which would be highly beneficial in the real world. Sort of like checking the model's fishing skill rather than just focusing on the fish that they caught to reinforce their learning. And all thanks to Alibaba's scale, they used up to 20,000 independent environment to run coding simulations in parallel for Quen3 coder models to be aligned with their coding tasks. That's like having 20,000 fishing rods simultaneously and tweaking the fishing techniques from all instances and optimizing them all at the same time. What's even crazier is that just like the Kimi K2 model, the success that these companies found was released completely open source with the Apache 2, which is fully permissive. As far as how the release of Quen3 coder is setting the trend in the industry, it's nice to see that the size of the models are getting smaller or at least plateauing in size, which gives retail users is a chance to be able to run these models locally sometime in the near future as hardware also improves in parallel. Another trend that Quen3 Coder confirms is the focus on techniques that are used to improve the model rather than the sheer size of the model data and compute. And finally, the fact that Quen3 Coder is being released as an open source model along with models like Kimi K2 is definitely relieving tension that people feel that one day LLM providers will suddenly jack up the price, giving the retail users assurance that this likely won't be a big concern.